account the extent of the local disease, the tumor size and the size of, of the breast, and the patient concerns about recurrence, cosmesis, and uh, side effects. They have all uh, should be included in tailoring a personalized uh, plan for this patient. Typically, we use a 6 MV energy in two tangent and a small supraclavicular field. Um, we sometimes uh, need some more energy, like in uh, 10 MV, but uh, this, is, this is not done for all the patients. In most of the patients, 6 MV is enough. Radiotherapy can use as, be, uh, as early as two to four weeks of surgery and as late as six months from surgery. But actually, the evidence beyond the decreased benefit of radiotherapy after six months of surgery is an uh, expert opinion only. And the most commonly adopted dose nowadays is a hypofractionation 40 gray to 42 and a half gray in 15 to 16 fractions um, and a boost if needed. And the boost is, is usually given in a standard, uh, standard fractionation, 10 gray in five fractions or 16 gray in eight fractions. Radiotherapy is not taking much time in recent uh, international meetings. In the San Antonio last month, radiotherapy, just a few talks about radiotherapy. And even if you look at the titles of these talks, they are talking about decreasing or even omitting radiotherapy. Yet, radiotherapy remains the art of oncology. And specifically here in the breast, there are, um, it will remain because, because uh, there are certain indications that will remain uh, with time. Uh, first one is the conservative breast surgery. We know from evidence that conservative breast surgery plus radiation e is equal to mastectomy. So as long as you are, you are having conservative surgeries, you will need radiation. The other indication is a co incompletely assessed axilla, I mean surgical assessment. And we have evidence from the Z11 and the Amaros studies uh, that radiotherapy is as equal as uh, surgical uh, axillary dissection in terms uh, of outcome of uh, uh, con uh, local control and survival. Uh, third indication is a positive margin in breast cancer, which I think uh, is not acceptable nowadays in the era of neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And the next is indication is nodal disease. There is an, an international consensus that all patients with more than three positive lymph nodes should receive uh, adjuvant radiotherapy. And as regard for the patients with one, two, three lymph nodes, we have evidence from ERTC 22922 and the EBC TCG meta-analysis that these patients may benefit from adjuvant irradiation. But actually these studies uh, were done many years ago and there are arguments about the benefit in these studies as they didn't have available good chemotherapy third generation that like we have today, they didn't have targeted treatment for anti-2, anti-HER2, CDK4-6 inhibitors, mTOR, and uh, immunotherapy. And they didn't have better hormonal treatment than we have today with the addition of fulvestrant and others. And the last indication is in T3 or T4 disease. And now let me go on to our case, uh, which is a female patient, 60 years old. She presented to us with a left uh, breast mass in the upper outer quadrant and sonomammogram showed enlarged left axillary lymph node, but they were not felt clinically. And there was an upper outer quadrant mass three centimeter in diameter with a Bayard score of five. She was diagnosed with a core biopsy proving invasive duct carcinoma, hormone positive, HER2 negative, with a T67 of 20%, and her metastatic work, workup was free of metastasis. This patient was operated upon with a surgeon with an upfront conservative breast surgery and uh, unfortunately this was not discussed in MDT. And the pathology came to us with a T2N2 invasive duct carcinoma with free margins. She received adjuvant chemotherapy in the form of four cycles of EC followed by 12 weeks of paclitaxel ended June 2020. And then she was scheduled for radiotherapy. And now comes the challenge while planning this patient, we found out that, that the surgeon has pushed the left breast upward. It's a more cranial in position now. You can see clearly the clavicle and the breast tissue on the left side appearing. So when we uh, planned this patient with the conventional way with two tangent and the superclav, we found out uh, that there is, we cannot cover the upper breast cuts with a standard plan. We had poor coverage between the abutting fields. We can see also problems with the heterogeneity with these cold spots, uh, even uh, no, no good coverage of the supraclavicular lymph nodes, 
and the gap between the two abutting fields. When we look, looked at the DVH, uh, the lymph nodes were covered only by 75%, uh, and that is not acceptable. So we thought about some little tricks to overcome this, and the first trick was by uh, couch angling. We pushed the leg of the patient away from the gantry uh, so that the, the, the beam should be uh, facing uh, more cranially from the lateral side and moving like towards her oral cavity, but we made sure that her oral cavity is not involved with any exit doses. We also made our calculations to avoid hot spots between the two abutting fields. And in this situation, we uh, collimated the supraclavicular field. We used a half beam blocking with a single isocenter that lies between the two fields. And when we came to plan evaluation for this patient, we found out that we had a better coverage of the upper presticates when, we, when you go down, you see even uh, more homogeneous dose distribution. Here we contoured the, the muscles, uh, like the RTUG, not like we did yesterday in the ISTRO workshop. Uh, we had better dose homogeneity. Now you cannot see the cold spots, and we have better matched fields with no hot or cold spots between the two fields. 97% of the BTV is now covered by 95% of the dose and the lymph node uh, shows a 91% uh, coverage. The lung and the heart were uh, safe within the average constraints. This was our first trick in this patient. Actually, this, uh, this trick is, uh, is written in books when we revised. Uh, it, it is already there, it has been tested before, and this could be accepted. But we thought about uh, how can we make it even better. So, we did another plan with phasing. We give this patient treatment in three phases. Every week we give a phase, and with each week we shift the isocenter down caudally and towards the chest wall. So in first, in first week we give this plan, and then in the second week we go down and in, and in the third week we go down and further down and in. And with each time we shift down, we um, expand the supraclavicular field uh, by one centimeter. So we go one centimeter down with each week. And when we looked at the plan evaluation for this patient, we had a nice homogeneous coverage of the target. We had no uh, cold spots. We had good coverage of the abutting fields and either, even better coverage of the supraclavicular nodes. When we looked at the dose constraints in the BTV, uh, we found out that we covered the, the chest wall with the 99% of the volume is covered by 95% of the dose, and the lymph nodes is now at 98.5. The heart is safe and the lung is safe as well. Uh, so I conclude that radiotherapy is a still an important, uh, an important part of breast cancer treatment. I recommend that all new cases of breast cancer should be discussed with an MDT, uh, the radiation oncologist, the, the surgeon, and the medical oncologist should speak together. Everyone should ask the other, what do you need from me? And the radiation oncologist should tell the surgeon clearly, sir, please do not go further beyond the midline with your scar. Do not go beyond the mid-axillary line. Please mark the, the tumor bed with, this, with the clips. Uh, things like this make the plan uh, designed for every patient much more easier. And I also conclude that not all case, cases of breast cancer are treated the same. Guidelines cannot treat 100% of the cases. You should, you should have a gold standard, you should have uh, your target covered and the constraints fulfilled, and then let your brain think about even better plans. And finally, uh, I recommend that uh, this technique of phasing uh, is all used to be tested in your centers and for further validation of this technique. Um, my last uh, slide is uh, to thank the team beyond uh, treating this patient and special thanks to uh, Professor Yasser Assad, our physicist, and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed Saib, for your elegant presentation. Any question for Dr. Ahmed? Thank you, Dr. Ahmed, for your elegant presentation. Now our next speaker, um, Dr. Mohamed Heba one of the eminent colleagues in our breast cancer unit in Enchant University. He will present uh, our case uh, in breast cancer unit, a special addition to cystic for right breast cancer.
Thank you, Professor Muhammad, for the presentation. Uh, today, I'll be uh, presenting a case. Uh, the idea is uh, of Dr. Professor uh, Muhammad Sabri, and I'll present it by me, myself, uh, Muhammad Haven. Uh, first, I'll present the case. It's a 39 years old premenopausal patient. She was diagnosed with right breast cancer. The solar mammography showed a mass uh, three centimeter inside at the upper inner quadrant. The evaluation also showed positive uh, clinical axillary lymph node. She was clinical staging is T2, N1, M0, hormone receptor negative, HER2 positive. So uh, due to the biology of the disease, uh, she was planned to start new adjuvant therapy with chemotherapy and dual HER2 blockade. And clips were inserted at the site of the tumor at the upper inner quadrant, and also a portacath uh, inserted at the left subclavian vein. So the patient started her treatment, uh, as I said, with taxanes and dual anti-HER2. After two cycles, she suffered from left subclavian vein uh, deep venous thrombosis. So uh, the portacast was removed and inserted at the right subclavian vein instead. So she finished the six cycles and then underwent right lumpectomy. She was uh, has, uh, achieved a good clinical response. She's now T1A, N1, and the clips was inserted at the tumor bed. So she was now planned to receive, she, uh, since she didn't achieve, achieve a pathological response, complete response, to uh, receive adjuvant TDM1 instead of uh, trastuzumab and post-operative radiotherapy. So this is a CT uh, simulation done for the patient. As you can see, the portacath is seen inside the radiation field, especially at the upper inner part, which is was the site of the initial tumor site. And also it is the site of the internal mammary lymph nodes, which is intended to be treated here as the patient has an inner quadrant tumor and lymph node positive. Here's another photo. So uh, just a, a quick review, what is a portacath uh, for these who are, uh, if there are new colleagues. Or, this is a venous uh, access port that's used widely in the treatment of cancer patient for in, uh, administration of chemotherapy. It's primarily placed in the subclavian axillary on the internal jugular vein on the upper chest inferior to the infraclavicular fossa. So it can be made of many different components. Most widely used are the plastic, stainless steel, but most commonly today in this era is titanium. So um, actually I've done a, quite a research about this case. So what do we know? That this this uh, portacast in the radiotherapy field will affect the dosimetry plan. Actually, it's not tested at all. There is very few retrospective data that uh, t um, address this subject if the presence of a venous caster uh, can affect the dosimetry Okay, so one study found that uh, uh, backscattering uh, can affect the dose as much as 14% in case of you're using 6 MAVE uh, photon beam and 11% in case of you're using 25 um, uh, megavoltage beams. Uh, that actually study was done for patients who has dental implants, so it was not addressing the venous, uh, the vascular, uh, the port catheter. Another study it used the film and absorbed that the attenuation was as much as 17.5% of the dose in 6 MAVE and 10% for 15 MAVE. So as you see, the numbers are quite different uh, between the two studies. A third study sorry, also tested the X-rays and tested for the electron beams. Uh, it was using uh, various types of portacat and see that uh, for stainless steel portacath, the difference in the dose can be as high as 17%. And if electron beams were being used, actually the difference was much higher. It can be go up to up to 45% of the dose difference attenuation of the beam. So uh, the larger study that I found was a study which tested 18 different ports were made from different manufacturers, different uh, materials. They concluded pretty much the same results. There is attenuation in the beam. 16.8% uh, in 6 MAVE photons and 7.2 for 8, uh, 18 MAVE photons. So, in order to conclude all these data, what we know now is that, yes, sport can cause a deviation in the distribution of the dose in all directions. It can cause backscatter, lateral scatter, and attenuation of the dose uh, beneath the portacast. So, the degree of the change of the dose is not uniformly known. As you have seen in the previous studies, all have shown different percentages of the attenuation of the dose. It will depend on many factors. It depends on the material of the port. So the plastic port will don't have 
that much effect. The titanium and the stainless steel ports will have much larger effect on the dose. The beam type, as I've said, the electron will have a much larger attenuation of the dose instead of the beams. And the higher the beam energy, the lower the attenuation of the dose can happen. So lower beams will be more affected. Electrons will be more affected. And if the material of the port is more of a higher atomic number, like stainless steel or titanium, it will be also cause more affection of the distribution of the dose. So as you can point here, you can see the 95% dose distribution, it kinds of attenuated compared to the lateral part. So the part of the beam that's passing through the porta cath actually is attenuated more than passing through normal tissue. So uh, again, uh, the crucial part in this case is that the porta cath is at the side of the high risk region, which is the upper inner quadrant, which is the side of the tumor bed intended to be the treated to the highest dose and also the internal memory lymph node, which should be treated in this patient as she has an inner quadrant tumor and a positive axilla. So, uh, well, we'll there are many, many solutions can be uh, explored here. First, can we reposition the porta cath? Unfortunately, the patient has a DVT that she's still receiving medical treatment for in the left side. We can consider removing it to the lateral side more, but uh, it can be troublesome to the patient. Removal of the porta cath as a whole, it can be troublesome that the patient needs to continue intravenous therapy of the TDM1, but can be reinserted again. It can, you can keep it and revise the dose distribution, but unfortunately, due to the high risk place of the port, it's in the high risk region, and also it will depend on the planning system and how accurately it can calculate the dose in this region. And to use higher energy photon in order to uh, try to compensate for the attenuation caused by the port, which also may not cause uh, the best homogeneity. So actually you opted in this patient in order to remove the porta cath, okay, in order to be sure of the distrib dose distribution in this patient, and it can be reinserted again in, in order to have the radiotherapy to complete her adjuvant therapy. And my take home message is that uh, vascular access ports are now being used widely in our cancer therapy. So uh, a case like this can be, um, we can face it more often after the wide use of the porticus nowadays. So we need more research about the impact of the vascular port uh, presence on dose distribution in treatment planning. You have to make sure to revise also the port placement and the port selection if case that you know that the port placement can affect your radiotherapy treatment delivery in the future, in, especially in your cancer, uh, breast cancer patient, and also to examine the dosimetric effects in any veneer foreign materials in the body, whether it's a porta cath, whether it's an implant, dental implant, whether it's an, another prosthesis that's uh, inserted anyway in the body. Uh, and always identify the material of the port being used as it uh, will also affect the dose distribution. Thank you. Thank you, Muhammad Habib, about your presentation. Any more questions for Dr. Muhammad? I want to highlight these, qu these um, difficulties in our practice because many patients we found it after, uh, especially after um, evolution of titanium uh, uh, MRI compatible porta cast. We have uh, a lot of patients needed to place the porta cast in the FC lateral side, either, um, either um, because of um, problems in the uh, deep vascular um, system, deep venous system in the contralateral side, or patient with bilateral breast cancer. So we, sh we should uh, select the site of porta cast placement, especially for the patient with inner quadrant lesion or patient uh, need for internal memory radiation. Uh, I think it is a very important to Muhammad issue to highlight uh, today that uh, portocast may be uh, an obstacle for delivering um, uh, accurate uh, and uh, um, um, post-optive uh, dedicated therapy to the tumor post, especially for the patient needed for uh, internal memory radiation and also inner quadrant lesions. Thank you, Dr. Muhammad. Dr. Muhammad Souh. Yes, D Dr. Mohammed, you know that sapeclan is not uh, common uh, in our uh, practice in our e in Egypt, and also uh, there is uh, a lot of patients experience it, uh, a DVT uh, uh, when placing the uh, pigtail or uh, placing the left uh, portacast. You know that um, the uh, the tracking of the portacast is longer in the when put in the in left side. So the favorable place to put a portacast for interventional radiology to put it in the right side. So uh, I, I highlighted this case today
to highlight this problem because we face it actually in the patient with bilateral breast cancer, uh, uh, when to place or where to place their portacast on the right side, on the left side. So uh, we should um, ha have a concern about the nature of the portacast and the position of the portacast and of also the scattering uh, um, uh, within the material of portacast, especially titanium based MRI compatible recent portacast now. Yes, we are now um, uh, we are happy to close this um, scientific meeting, and Dr. Mohammed Afdouh he will close the ceremony. Uh, on behalf of the BGICC, I would like to thank you all, uh, our expert uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Rob, uh, uh, Roberto Riccia, uh, uh, Dr. Portman and uh, my dear professors, Dr. Mohammed Sabri, uh, Dr. Uh, Mohammed Heba, Dr. Ahmed uh, Sohaib, all our speakers, and uh, my, our panelists, uh, Dr. Khaled uh, Al-Shahat, Dr. Hani Sami Atalla, Dr. Mohammed Sabri, and Dr. Yesri Rostom, uh, and of course, our moderator, uh, Dr. Ahmed Sohaib and uh, Dr. Sara Isam for their contribution, and without their efforts, uh, this course would not be uh, in, happen in this uh, uh, way. Uh, I would like to thank my dear colleague, <laughs> Dr. Khaled Abdelkrim, who organized He's this sending him the doctor. <laughs> while I was uh, sick, and now I am taking over as he is sick God. as well. <laughs> taking places, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we, we swapped it, it uh, our rules uh, in the last uh, two months as I was sick and uh, Khaled was taking the, the job over his shoulders and now he is away sick <laughs> uh, for uh, suffering from the coronavirus uh, uh, as well. Hopefully next year <laughs> we are all fine and we safe. We will gather together inshallah. <laughs> And we can uh, uh, have you all in this uh, country. And again, I thank you all. And I'm uh, very proud to, to, have, to be with you at this uh, scientific meeting. Um, and uh, just to say thank you to all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I want you to know that no matter where you are in life, no matter how low you have sunk, no matter how bleak your situation, this is not the end. They're setting up the flag now. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene.
millions of women around the world, but in particular in developing countries, are dying because of cancers like breast cancer, cervical cancer, that are perfectly treatable and curable in many other places. We need